will sing a little song, but it ain't very long About a lazy farmer wouldn't hold his corn And why it was, I never could tell For that young man was always well That young man was always well He planted his corn on June the last, in July it was up to his eye. In September there came a big frost, and all that young man's corn was lost. All that young man's corn was lost. OK, you can open your character sheets. Excellent. Mine is here, in my hand. I find myself holding a character sheet for Nathaniel Coombs, age 54. Former doctor, you didn't say I was kicked out in disgrace. <laughs> so here's the horrible twist. It's the Depression, and you are all down on your uppers. Oh, fuck. You are all former whatever you were. I see. And you are all living on a Hooverville outside the town of Crawley. Um, As a result, you have very little luck. Your power is reduced. Got it, isn't it? Your credit rating is 1%. You are down and outs. Bums! That's the twist. I love it. The horrible truth. Uh, so I need a new character because this guy's <laughs> uh, this guy's basically unplayable. Thanks. <laughs> well, the twist is they're all unplayable. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> to be honest, it's, <laughs> it's a more useful character than some I've played. Oh God, the description: classic beauty marred by gauntness and flaking skin, clothes are tattered but elegant. Like fucking Miss Havisham. I'm still reading from this statistic that I just read. I just like to do this in relation to my luck score. <laughs> I think probably that Thanks. applies to all of Thanks. us. I mean, that is literally the worst I've ever seen. Is it worse than 20? I'm not going to say until we have to play it. I also think, I mean, the businessman having the worst luck of all during the right does, does kind of make sense. Yeah, yeah. Good point, man, good point. I can't think right now. They're such bad stats. Yeah. <laughs> overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. It's exciting. Yeah. Oh, well, I can imagine that Latin's going to come in handy in that shanty town. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely speak English. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder your business failed. <laughs> My prospects, I think it's fair to say, are somewhat bleak. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Now his cold trip had just begun Saying, young man, have you hold your corn? I've tried, I've tried, I've tried in vain But I don't believe I'll raise one grain Don't believe I'll raise one grain Apocalypse players present Bleak Prospect A Depression Era Scenario for Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition by Scott Dawood from the Nameless Horrors Collection Starring Dan and McAleer as former socialite Maureen Frame Joseph Chance as former businessman Thomas Dolan and Dan Wheeler as former medical doctor Nathaniel Coombs. The keeper of arcane law is Dominic Allen. Chapter One, Chicago Overcoat. Now, until I read language own dash English, I thought the second language was language other French. I was like, what's that? Some sort of shadow <laughs> <laughs> Quebecois. <laughs> nice. I like it. I, I like him a lot. He's a great character. Yeah, I like this guy. I really feel I like this guy. It's such a shame. It's such a shame both of us are going to die. Such a shame now. And, and, that, and you are the only one who's going to survive. <sighs> and I don't know which one I'm talking to. I ain't dying in this. I can't. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, really, my character sheet. I think there's a chance I'm already dead. <laughs> Is that just from the appearance or from a number of factors? 
I just uh, try to try to try to work out what what my voice is for Nathaniel Coombs. It's just uh, this is not it. This is me working myself into it. <laughs> Nor- normally, I do this while I'm editing during the day when I work out my character and I I try out try out, I try out a few different voices. But um, but now I'm having to do this on the fly. I can't do it in my head. You're going to have to hear hear the hear the process. A peek um, behind the I- curtain of the actor's <laughs> method. <laughs> So lambda, <laughs> yeah. So I think for which um, read unprofessional, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I you went think... to Bristol. You just come up. You just do the, the old silly voice you always do. <laughs> uh, so I am uh, Nathaniel Coombs, a uh, former medical doctor, and um, I am fifty-four. But it may seem that I'm older. I somewhat prematurely aged, and uh, some would say haggard. Uh, and I still wear a very badly stained doctor's coat, white coat. Um, you, you, I know the people around the camp can rely on me, and uh, maybe that's all you need to know for now. What about Maureen Frayne? Well, if you look at me, you'll be able to... <laughs> <laughs> no, I probably should change that voice. <laughs> I don't know how many episodes we're going to get out of this, but that would be taxing. Um, <laughs> um, if you, uh, well, to see Maureen, she, um, you can tell uh, she's a classic beauty, really. And that's still there. Um, sort of only slightly marred by gauntness, flaking skin, lank, sort of <laughs> greasy hair. But I mean, who around here isn't afflicted by such things as those. She can't afford those uh, expensive moisturizers anymore. Her clothes are tattered, but they're elegant. They're, um... You can tell that she... she hold, The way she holds herself. She was once uh, a gal about town. A lady who lunches. And, uh... Various other things. But, um... She's, she's got a sort of a stark stare that, um... When she's not schmoozing, she looks quite hard-nosed. Quite hard-lined. But, um, yes, that's probably... That's the description, anyway. More may emerge. I'm Thomas... I'm Thomas Dolan, and, uh... Well, now, yes, I'm still solid enough, and I'm still a little ruddy face, but, uh, I've got a mop of unruly black hair. But I'm definitely... I'm definitely not a happy man. Um, I had it all, and I lost it. Uh, and I may have some enemies there, uh, but I, I still got some fire in, in the old belly there. Still got a got a need to prove uh, a point. Um, you might have seen me playing the fiddle, maybe by a campfire. And I come from Boston, but uh, you know the family doesn't come from Boston. Family's Irish. What else can I say to you? Um, once I made it big, and if I ever make it big again. I'm going to make sure that anybody who's cold or hungry here is never going to be cold or hungry again. Nice. Well, also, I'm about 34, you might guess. Well, mid-30s. I used to look, I used to look about 38, but now I look 44. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going about... Hmm. I'm quite a big man. Quite a big man. You have all been living in this Hooverville. It's a mile from the nearest town, which is where you all used to live or work, called Crawley, which itself is about 30 miles from um, Arkham. So your, your Hooverville is um, just off the, uh, the old Arkham Road. And it's November. It's cold. There is rampant disease in the Hooverville. You've been scraping by as best you can, trying to stick together. There's a there's pretty good camaraderie in the shanty town. Uh, you know, it's all tarpaulin tents and corrugated tin lean tos. You have a little campfire in the middle. There's about forty odd of you living there, forty seven, say, um, men, women, and children. You have all suffered. It's worse than just malnutrition and hunger. You are all sick. There's... You have flaking skin. Really lethargic. You feel... Like you're wasting. Dr. Coombs, you've been 
curious about this malady. You've been looking into it, and it's like nothing you've ever seen before. No. And unfortunately, in your little medical shack, you have a patient who is worse than anyone else. Uh, Harold Priestley, a former journalist. Oh, dear God, not Harold Priestley. Yeah. Um, and on this particular morning, this frosty November morning, it's cold, you can hear the sounds of of people moving around outside the shack. People are making coffee. Someone's struck up on a banjo, an old banjo that's missing a string, singing some forlorn song. And Harold Priestley is lying on a on a pallet bed in your medical shack. It's all very makeshift. It's what you've ever you've been able to sort of get donated from the hospital or you've managed to beg, borrow and steal. And he lets out this this pained groan. Oh, 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 oh. And you think, he, he might not be much longer for this world, unfortunately. So what's everyone doing this morning? I think I'm, I think I'm just... Um, I've, I've picked up the, uh, the fiddle straight out of bed. Um, I'm sat on the uh, pallet bed. And I'm looking at my fiddle and I'm, I'm just double-checking the, the, the strings are all right because sometimes I get nervous that the rats will gnaw through them overnight and I'm just checking that they're all okay and I'm putting a tiny little bit of grease on them because you can get lots of grease but you can't get any fat or any um, meat off of things I've, I've found that old mechanical grease can work quite well on uh, for helping turn it to tune it um, and then no doubt I, I can hear opposite the um, I can hear Maureen opposite. Mm. She's still a good-looking woman, Maureen. Sometimes that preys on my mind. <laughs> yeah. There's a curtain. There's a curtain. There's a it's a blanket curtain. Mm. And maybe I can hear her moving around, or I don't know. Maybe she's muttering to herself. I don't know. I'm uh, well. I was going to ask. Am I here with uh, Esther? I assume Esther's not there. Oh, is that who you bunk with? That's my daughter, twelve years old. Oh, sorry, I forgot. It looks like she's all, must have already been up and out. But she she is living with me in the yeah. camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you slept really well last night, actually, mm. considering how hungry you always are. Yeah, and how cold it is. It's f- so cold. The ground is actually frozen outside the tent. Mm. But it looks like so she must have been up before you. But can you give me a right. a spot hidden roll? Ah, uh, yes. I don't like this already. That's a 30, and my spot hidden is 50, so that's a success. You notice her shoes are still there. Oh. And her overcoat. But it looks like the bed has been disturbed quite heavily. Oh, goodness. Uh, I, uh, I immediately... Uh, the Obviously, the worst scenario pops into a mother's head, but she uh, calms that down by saying, Oh, Esther, uh, what have I told you about making the bed? Out there playing with the others, are you and I? I but I don't make the bed. I, um, I I take her coat and I immediately leave to find where she is because she must be freezing. Yeah. I think I think as you're leaving, I, uh, I knock on the piece of wood that's um, just like the, the big central piece of wood that holds up various parts of this part of the town, Hooverville. Uh, uh, I'm thinking about going to get some of that acorn coffee. You know, the stuff they grind up? Maybe check in on the doctor. Do you want oh, any? Oh, Maureen? Thomas, um, yes, you, you haven't seen Esther, have you? Oh, uh, Maureen, no. I. What? Esther, no. Oh, um, not to worry. I'm, I'm sure she'll be around here somewhere. Um, uh, coffee, yes. I'll, uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll come find you. Thank you. Well, I'll be at the docks. I mean, the doctors. Yeah, not yeah. down, not down the docks, obviously. No, no. <laughs> no, that <laughs> no, would be course. crazy in this cold. Yes, and she's sort of tossing the words back over her shoulder as she sort of, uh, she's scanning around and she's trying to see Esther. Uh, I think I might follow her and say. When did you last see her? Uh, well, last night. Um, I, it's 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 nothing. Uh, but she's gone out without a coat. So uh, wherever she is, she'll just be playing somewhere. But um, she 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 always goes out without a coat. Uh, sure? <laughs> I, I, I'll tr- I'll try and jog up after after her. But of course, that brings on a bit of a. 
and I start to cough and I slow down. I'm leaning on my thighs. Oh, you Thomas, know. Thomas, you must <laughs> oh, get no, that looked fine. at. You, 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 you find her. <laughs> well, let's, I'll see if I can. <clears throat> you sure you don't want me to come with you? No, no, that's fine. Uh, uh, she'll be around here somewhere. You get yourself to the doctors. I'll, I'll, I'll see you there. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Will you come back? All right. Will do. I'll, I'll head over to the docks. So you get to the doctors, and yeah, Doctor Coombs, this um, this man Harold Priestley is. You think he's not got long left? Mm. This might be it. He started to make a kind of rattling sound. So I I turn to um, uh, Billy Spitzer if he's there, the the young boy who helps me out in the tent, and and he's not. Oh, he's not. He's not there. Well, that's convenient because if he was, I would have tried to get him to um, get out of the way. So is it just me and Priestley? Yeah. Until I see here yeah, someone at the door. Mm. So I am. Um, I I go over to Priestley and I take his hand and I say, Harold, uh, uh, is there uh, anybody I should get for you or uh, anyone you'd like to speak to? A uh, message I could pass on? He, he can barely speak. Uh, he sort of... Uh, uh, Ah, 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 my hand, my hand. Can you give me a, a spot hidden roll, please? Yes, I'll give you a spot hidden roll, but I will also take his hand, I think. So, well, I've, I, I'm way over anyway, I've rolled a 50. So, no, I failed to spot anything, but I do sort of look to his hand anyway, since he'd be saying my hand and take it. You look down at the hand, and you probably feel it before you see it. His hand has crumbled in yours. <gasps> oh, God. Christ. It's like chalky. There's so much dust. All of the skin is just flaked away. And the bones crumble. And there is a kind of... Uh, a sort of pus-like... Like he's... Like liquefaction. Oh, my God. Of, of what's left of his muscle tissue and his blood. And it just oozes out across this... This crumbling bits of... Oh, God. What was flesh? And can you give me a sanity roll? <laughs> Early doors. <laughs> Straight out the gate. Don't fail it. Oh, no, that's it. I passed my, I passed my sanity. Did you say early doorwards? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> terrible, terrible. Uh, you lose a point of sanity. I certainly do. Um, oh, and at that moment, there's a knock at the door. <laughs> uh, um, just a moment. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm tending to a patient. I uh, just wondered if you wanted it uh, while passes for coffee, that coffee replacement they've got going around here, Doctor. Yeah, yes, that, that sounds like a very good idea. It's me, uh, Tommy Dolan, obviously. Sh sure, Tommy, um... You can actually just, see him through the like the door is just obviously a, a a bit of a bit of corrugated tin held on by string onto the side of the rest of the corrugated tin and it it hangs open so you can you can see half of of Dolan's face. Uh, just w w one moment, p p wait for me. Wait for me outside. I'll I'll be right with you. J don't come in. Sure, sure. No, problem. maybe maybe an infection. I, I I step back. I step back. Is Priestley still alive, conscious, or is he? He, he, he is, and he's clearly in agony. He starts to writhe, and every time he moves, another part of him sort of sheds away and crumbles. Have I got something, have I got something I can give him to accelerate this process? To, to try and, I'm just thinking about, obviously, like, you know, I, I've, I've taken the Hippocratic Oath, but like, looking at my ide ideology and my beliefs, says every human being deserves dignity and compassion no matter their station in life and looking at this is not dignified and the com most compassionate thing would be to put an end to this a bit quicker yeah uh give me a medicine roll thank you yeah that's a, um, a hard success so you um you find something you can you can give him to sort of ease his passing you 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 dose him up with painkillers and you try and sort of hurry him along a little bit. Sure enough, he, within a few moments, he, he's, he's definitely dead. Oh. But you notice movement in his abdomen. God. Meanwhile, uh, <laughs> Maureen Frayne. Yeah. Uh, what have you been doing? Well, I'm searching for uh, Esther. 
I, I found her, I assume. You go outside, do you? I mean, how big is the camp? It's not that big. Yeah, I'm outside. I yeah. assume... There's people around the campfire. Do I see any children? Any of the... I assume there's other children here. There's a, f- there's a few other children, and mm. they seem to be playing some kind of uh, hide-and-tag game. I go up and I immediately turn on the charm and I say, Charlie, David, um, where's Esther? Have you seen her? Oh, uh, gee, Mrs. Frain, we ain't seen Esther this morning. Oh, I see. Not at all. Will, will you keep an eye out for me? Uh, sure thing. Sure thing, Mrs. F. Thank you. Thank you, boys. And one of them, uh, one of them pipes up, this sort of little boy with broken spectacles, and he says, uh, We ain't seen Billy either. Oh. Either. <laughs> Either or either. I, I could never tell. Um, uh, Billy. And is Billy... Do I know Billy? Is it uh, his parents? Uh, yeah. Billy's one of... Uh, Billy's actually an orphan. He doesn't have any parents in the... Ah. In the oh. town. But How he, uh, he is Esther's best friend. Right. Oh, well, they're probably off together playing make-believe out in the... Well, uh, keep an eye out for either of them, won't you? And, 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 and come tell me when they come back to camp. And I think if I've, if I've basically looked around the majority of the camp, I'm just going to start going door-to-door, shack-to-shack. Yeah, OK. Well, in that case, you're sort of walking around the camp mm. and you notice Nancy Carver is sat on her own. People are sat around the campfire, they're trying to get it going and they're trying to get warm. They're passing out little tins, little tin mugs and and old bean cans of coffee. Mm. And it's coffee made from old coffee grounds and and roots and acorns. Um, But you notice Nancy Carver is sat further away from everyone else on an old uh, tree stump. Yeah. And she's she's sat there with her arms folded, and she's she's just staring intently at the floor, and and she's rocking backwards and forwards slightly. In which case, I'd like to approach her. People are chatting away. They're sort of ignoring. Um, does she look dressed for the weather? No. Ah. Okay. Well, I approach her, and I slightly gingerly. I'm usually quite, um, you know. Uh, well, I'm a, I used to be. I was a socialite, of course, but um, I say. Um, Nancy, um, what on earth are you doing out without a coat? You'll freeze. You'll catch your death of cold. She looks up at you and and she gasps momentarily, like as if she's seen you for the first time. And then she goes, "Oh, oh, oh God, oh God!" And she starts crying. It? Nancy, what is it? No, 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 no! They came. Their faces were all white. I saw them. I saw them. Their faces were white. They didn't have any faces. Oh no! Oh God! They came in the night. Oh, Oh. And, she start, and then she starts. She starts really. Scre- pe- people around the campfire have stopped talking to each other, starting to notice this. Yeah. And she starts screaming, and she says, she grabs you, and looks in your eyes. She said, they took out a puppet. They took out a like a a dummy, a, a puppet dummy, and they made it sing. You know. Oh God. Yeah. What's that? Her hands over her ears. Nancy, please, um, Thomas, Thomas, uh, 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 someone get the dark. Someone get the dark. Doctor, can I can I hear that call? Oh yeah, almost certainly. You can probably hear the screaming as well and the the hysterics. Uh, I'll I'll dash over, but I'll, but I'll say, hey, Doc Doc Coombs, and then I'll 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 run as best I can, which you know is always about twenty yards, and then <sighs> mm. I get that weird fatigue and the, oh, the sense of dizzy sense of dizziness comes over me again. And I just I'm just not the man I was. I'm not the man I was, you know? Um, um, presumably I can hear the, the shouts for the doctor as well. Yeah, absolutely. But I can still see this movement inside this abdomen. Yeah, it's very subtle, but it's it's unusual. <sighs> Could be gas escaping. I think I'm committed yeah. to helping Maureen now. So. Yeah, and I think, um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd quite like to maybe... Uh, perform an, an autopsy, but I, if someone's yelling for the doctor, that's got to be my priority. So, I, um, I, I maybe sort of t- throw a throw a sheet over this body, mm. and um, and uh, I put uh, something on the on the sheet that indicates to Billy that there's a dead body there that we we've, we've been here before. So it's maybe a maybe it's just a couple of tools like crossed over like an X on the mm. or like a like a cross. On, on top of the sheet, so I know, so Billy knows not to disturb it. Mm-hmm. 
and then I, I leave the tent and I lace it up as quickly as I can and then I rush off in, in the direction of the shouts with my rudimentary doctor's bag with me. So you've all ended up stood around Nancy Carver, who is who is on her knees now on the frozen earth, just just wailing, hysterical and shaking and shaking backwards and forwards. It's all right, Nancy, it's all right. Thomas, Thomas, she, Nancy. she was talking about the pale-faced people visiting in the night, a puppet sheep. Oh, all right, all right. Doc, stand doc, back. Doc. Stand back. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody stand back. Let the doctor do his work. Stand back. And I, I yeah, I come forward and, and just try to try and comfort her if I, as best I can. Give me, give me a psych roll with a, with a, with a bonus die. I, I think I need a hard psychology roll. Psychology or psychoanalysis. Psychology. Uh, uh, either, whichever's better. Well, psychology's better. Did you say a hard, you want a hard success? I tell you what, a hard success on a psychology, but a regular success on psychoanalysis. Would be. I'm going to go psychoanalysis then. I was hoping you might say mm-hmm. that. Never high end, high end. Oh, great. I don't need the bonus die. That's a hard success. Yes. Like, oh, yes. an 11. That's what we need. Let's get, well, let's let's get into trouble now. Come on. Come on. Yeah, let's do it. So as the, as the doctors sort of, how, what are you doing to calm her down? Well, I'm, I'm kneeling down next to her and opening my doctor's bag, um, uh, seeing if I've got some, some sort of, um, uh, like something, uh, I don't know, it would be, it wouldn't be smelling salts, would it? Because that's going to wake someone up, whether I've got the opposite to that. Maybe I've got a little tot of brandy or something, but mainly I'm just sort of doing, doing my best bedside manner. And I was a good doctor. I am a good doctor. Yeah, you are. And, and yeah, maybe you give her a, a little nip of rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. What you've got. And just sort of like r- rubbing her back as well. Like knowing that that's even just that can calm someone down. Yeah. Like a baby. Yeah. Like a baby. Like a baby. Patting her on the bottom. Not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, she's starting to calm down as she does the other uh, Maureen and Thomas. So maybe you've taken a step back slightly and, and yeah. everyone around the campfire has taken a step forwards to see what's going on. Mm. And an old timer. Um, oh, what's his name? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you his, his fucking name. Um, <laughs> you won't believe his name <laughs> when I find it. Uh, oh yeah. His name. This guy. Is it Dot Scorewood? <laughs> <laughs> That's the old lady who lives here. Um, it's old, it's old, um, uh, you call him, you do, everyone just calls him the professor. But yeah, he's, uh, Carl, Carl Rothstein. He's a, he's an old German professor, long, wizened beard. He mutters something to you both. He says, Oh, faceless men. Again. Huh. I, I saw them. I saw them two weeks ago in, in my, in my dream. She's confusing her dreams with reality. Yes. You know what they say? They come in the night and they, they, uh, they fill your head with nightmares. Well, uh, um, no, Professor, I, I don't know that saying. Um, are you, are you claiming you've been having the same dreams as, as Nancy here? Haven't you had the dreams? Is that regular? No. Have I had dreams? I, I don't think I have. Maybe you have. Maybe oh, have. well, that would change things if I had here. <laughs> uh, there are rumours going around the camp uh, about men without faces. It's not the first time that's been mentioned. It's been going I... on for about two years. Oof. But did have I always assumed it's uh, folklore? Or, um, mm. yeah. The children talk about it the most. That's the... Uh... I've, uh, yeah, that's what I assume is some silly thing. And maybe the professor, I mean, <laughs> clever as he clearly is, um, <laughs> the old German professor is probably just, uh, you know, he's maybe gone past it slightly, I, I assume. So, okay. Well, in that case, if it's not something new that I've heard, I just assume that poor Nancy here is having a, a breakdown. So I'm glad I got the doctor, but I'm going to start scanning around again because my main priority is Esther. Or Billy. So, Doctor Coombs, you do calm her down. What's what's all this about, uh, Nancy? What, what, what's brought all this on? She was hysterical before, definitely. She was having a traumatic reaction. You've seen this before, yeah. But now she does seem like she's calm. She's breathing regularly. She sits back down and she looks at you, and she seems very sincere when she says, "Last night." They were moving toward the campfire. In your dream, Nancy? No. No, Doctor. In... 
they were moving towards the... Normally, I've seen them before in the trees, but they were moving towards the campfire. And I was sat right here with... with Billy Spitzer. It was... It was maybe... one in the morning. I couldn't sleep. That's the Billy, the orphan Billy. Mm. Yeah, so I immediately tuned back in. I couldn't sleep. And... And there they were. They came as clear as anything. Men without these plain white faces. And and uh, did uh, did Billy see these uh, faceless men, Nancy? Yes. Yes. Masks. They must be wearing masks. Do you do you say that? Do you say that for her to hit? Yeah. Well, I, I think I sort of say it as much maybe for Maureen. And and for and for Coombs, but it's it's that loud. Uh, well, uh, give me a persuade roll. Also, as soon as you say that, that disturbs me because I've been assuming this is a thing dreamt up by the children. If an adult's suggesting they must be wearing masks, that's suddenly put the fear of God into me because they might be actual people. Mm, yeah. yeah, you would have thought a businessman would have that, but no. It's of course my fast talk is my power, so it's the base. <laughs> Which is 10%. Let's go for it, guys. Do you, do you have charm? Uh, again, you would think that would, a businessman would have that, but, you know, I'm, I'm down on hard, I'm on hard times, guys. So, charm 15%. All right. Lost his charm in the divorce. Never did marry. Never did marry. <laughs> Ooh. But with luck 20, it, it, <laughs> prevents, you, luck. it prevents you from doing what I want to do, because 20 yeah. on a 15... Pretty good roll, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been a quarter, but it's of, been a quarter of my luck. 20 luck. On a sort of casual persuade. <laughs> there's a there's a brittle quality to my voice that has, just doesn't convince anybody, does it? Um, I, I almost sound cynical, which is totally the wrong angle. And yet that's the opposite of what I feel. It's almost like I'm thinking out loud. In which case, I think I sort of hold hold a hand up. Masks. Just to sort of to, to, sh- to shush him. Because I'm, you know, trying to focus on what Nancy's saying. Sorry, Doc. Then she says, she, her face darkens slightly as she says, they had a, they took out a puppet, like a ventriloquist's dummy, holding it like a baby. It was, it was wrong, though. It, it wasn't well made, I think. And they they poked it with a pin and it sang and then she she clutches her head again I don't want to hear the song again Nancy where, where's where's Billy now where's uh, where's Billy Nancy she just shakes her head yes Nancy where's Billy where's Billy have you seen Esther was Esther with you last night she looks over towards your shack and then looks back at you and just shakes her head. Dude, what? what why? I don't why? remember anything after the puppet sang. Can I do a psychology or something? I, I'm going to I'm gonna dash over to the shed while he does the psychology roll. While she, while Maureen Frayne does the psychology roll, I'm going to go back to the shed. To, to yeah. Frayne's... Was it the sort of place that the one we sort of live separated by the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to ours. I'm going to go back to... Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, but friends, you're there, so it's your psychology. Yeah. But I wordless, I wordlessly run. Could, could I do a psychology roll to see if I gauge yeah. what what that look meant? Yeah. I, I don't have a. I don't think I have a psychology score actually. So what? Uh, well, what the, would base it be the base is ten. 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 Ten, ten, ten. Yeah. Oh, it is ten. I got a one. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Wow. Woo-hoo. That's it, guys. We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. You two are acing Fucking it so far. Yeah. I fucked Wait, it that's, up. But you're... That's just 80. The start. Two from three. That's 89. But yeah. I, <laughs> um... <laughs> I turned them round. It's now that we find out after all the. To what two. Years, I've been doing right? it wrong the whole time. Dan's number blind. <laughs> <laughs> number blind. <laughs> Innumerate. <laughs> 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 I've just been guessing this whole time. <laughs> and you still don't guess a number. Well under. enough. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. No. So you wouldn't need to roll. Why would the numbers even matter? 
You yeah. are a random, a number, random number generation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so, yeah, so you think, in fact, you're sure. Yeah. She is remembering something that she isn't even conscious of remembering. Like it's, like it's a, a deep, deep thought that she's had that isn't even surface right. level that she, she saw something last night that she is either repressed or forgotten. They must have, it, it, it related to your shack. Mm. Possibly she saw them go in there. I get the impression that she, she, there would be no point trying to dig for more information from her because it's so buried. But that's the, so I immediately then run over as well, following Thomas, who's probably there by the time I start jogging. But I'm frantic now. That's really worrying. And all the thoughts are going through my head, you know, what the police presence is like. Would they even listen to any of us from the shantytown? Is there, like, what, you know, possibilities, possibilities. But, yeah, it's probably back to the dock or... Well, I, I'm just sort of looking around to see whether I can see any of the children because I haven't seen Billy and I've got wind that Est Esther is missing as well. Um, and I just wonder whether there are any children around. Well, I spoke to Charlie and David who were playing a game. So there are children, which is... I don't know if that's worrying or... I'd, l I'd love to sneak in a, a tracking role. Mm. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, you but, give me a tracking role. But, I, but it's sort of not descriptive in that sense. Sort of as you're walking over to it's the... Just like I pull up short of the track and then and then look more carefully to see if there's anything. Because it's early morning in November and there's, there's been some rain. There's mud, of course, everywhere. Mm. Uh, uh, it's pretty disgusting conditions, I should imagine, here. Mm. Um, yeah. And I'm just wondering if there's any sort of marks or obvious things. I don't get any bonus on this, so it's it's entirely down to the basic 10%, but I'm going to give it a go. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll accept tracking or a spot hidden roll. Uh, well, spot hidden is 25, I think. It's, that's the base, isn't it? Uh, spot hidden 25%. That's better, though. Let's do that. Mm, where's that 20 when you need it? 66. Uh, and I'm not going to push it, so I don't see anything, but I think, therefore, I'm 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 paused long enough for, for Maureen to catch me up, but I do hold out an arm and I say, "Can you see anything? Can, can, can you see anything?" Uh, yeah, uh, and I look I, at I look at her with the understanding that I didn't even bother to, to work out what she was thinking. I just smell trouble. Yeah. She looked at the shack, and I think these guys came and took her. Thank you for giving me that, because I think the frantic nature of all the thoughts. I couldn't really think what I was going to do, but as soon as you say, can you see anything, and you're sort of looking around outside the shack, I do a track roll as well. And my track or, a, or a spot good. hidden. Oh, a track's good, good. Yeah. Sweet. Um, of course, because you used to go hunting, didn't you? Oh, yes. Me and Charles mm -hmm. used to go hunting, used to go horse riding. That is a 42 on a 50 track. Yes! Nice. So... Looking around this campfire, clearly the night before it was ver it was very muddy, yeah, and what have you. But this morning, was well, frozen. Frost right? has yeah. frozen over everything. Excellent. And then you see the, there's been a lot of foot traffic around the campfire, and there's a set of footprints that stand out because they are clearly well maintained shoes. Mm expensive shoes looking and you think what kind of success did you get uh it was a 40 it was a regular success yeah well uh, if if you spend a bit of time mm. you realize there's prob there's probably three or four of these sets of footprints that clearly don't belong to anyone who lives here and they seem to head back towards the main road and can I tell whether or not it, it looks like they've come to our shack and left again? Yeah. Oh, my God. My God. Uh, Thomas. Thomas, look at these. These are sharp shoes. These are these are wealthy shoes. I recognize them immediately. Of course I do. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, finally cobbled. Um, someone was here last night. 
they, they must have taken Billy and Esther. And I start sort of, uh, I, I try and push down, try and stop myself hyperventilating, but the panic is like starting to settle in. And I say, we need to follow them. We need to follow them. Back to the main road. Who can we call? Who, who can we talk to? As she, as, as she moves away from me, sort of towards the road, I, no. I do grab her arm. Because um, uh, I'm, I'm a big man, and I and I, I think. Well, Thomas, what are, what are you doing? We need wait, to go. Wait, wait, they've got they've, they've got a hell of a head start on you. Stop there. What? Don't just 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 think it through. The doctor didn't look happy this morning. We need to make sure that we can go looking for them. Well, no, no offense, Thomas, but I don't, I don't care how the doctor feels. She'll be she'll be all right. How do we know? She'll be all right. No, I'm just I'm just saying it's not straightforward. This this is. Okay, okay. Think this yes. through. We need help. I think, I, th- I think given, given Maureen's connection, uh, I think this might be a sanity role for Maureen. Yeah, I think it definitely is. I should have suggested... No, I mean, I, I totally agree. Um, 41 on my 40 sanity. I've got, the image, I've got the image of a canary flapping. Yeah. A beautiful songbird with slightly a Blue buttery hair. Gar. And, yeah. and 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 flaking, flaking problems flaking around the feathers, cheeks, the beak, yeah. slightly worn out tail feathers. Yeah. Oh, you know, she was a bit flaky around the beak, but other than that, beautiful. <laughs> uh, maybe actually, the mere thought of that image, I I let go of you, your arm, and I and I do, I let you go, but I I'm sort of yeah. intrigued to see what you're going to do. Well, I th- I think. You haven't convinced me with your talk of the doctor, but by stopping me, you have made me realize I, we need backup. I, I should go. I, I immediately, I da- well, I'll see what Dom says, but what I want to do is dash back into the shack, grab anything of Esther's that I, I've already got a coat on me, but I want to make sure I've got my coat on me. I want to make sure I've got my, uh, my, um, 38 on me. You lose two sanity points. Ooh. Excellent. So I'm down to 38. Can I make a suggestion? I, I sting away as the slap hits me. <laughs> the, the hand yeah. just, just whips out and it's like it's lightning fast. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, I, and I go, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. I just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then I see that you don't even know that you've really done it. You just, no. you've run in. And I, and I see instant the reaction. Who's lost her daughter? And I, I'm stood there for a brief moment, entirely alone, which happens so rarely in the camp, anyway, in the in the Hooverville. And I, I sort of look around me to see who else has seen it, and like maybe, maybe it's uh, Nancy Carver's weird eyes are looking at me, maybe. And while while Doc Coombs is is struggling to kind of make sure that she's okay, and I. Mm. I, my shoulders slump and I, I, I return immediately to him fast I, but I thrust my hands into my pockets uh, and, and all sense of heroism and daring do is gone big red welt blooming on your cheek I just kind of feel this bloom of mm. having been slapped yeah. even though I know she didn't mean it you know what I mean mm. uh, Doc, Doc, what are we going to do? Uh, I mean have I ever heard any of this Oh, I got the I've got the the vibe that has this been articulated to me. I think I I think I say looks like the looks like the men looks like there might have been men here. Fresh shoes. That's what she said. Frain Maureen said that. Well, we should um, we we have we have to we have to go after them. We have to, we have to. But I um I have some some business to uh, to wrap up here and attend to. These people need me. I. Uh, uh, just give, give me, give me. I want to do a psychology on him. He's been weird with me all morning. Normally, he accepts my acorn <laughs> coffee offer. He was really standoffish. Uh, have you seen my character sheet? I haven't been weird with you all morning. <laughs> <laughs> He's been his old normal self, but at the same time, <laughs> yeah. But you're welcome to do a uh, psychology. There's something I saw through the. I saw through the. Um, I saw, I saw, he's got that weird place as well because he's got the tent that also has a corrugated door on it. It's kind of complicated. But <laughs> I, mental I, building. I looked, I looked through, I looked through the corrugated door and I saw something odd happen. It's happening. my medical clinic. It's the best I can make it. I, yeah. I, I know it's only got a corrugated door, but. <laughs> okay, I'm clearly the problem here. You two go and have a great adventure. <laughs> I literally can't pass shit. <laughs> it's been fun. No, you don't. You don't get away that easily. No, Maureen, 
Maureen, there's a reason we share a shack. I, I nod. I nod and I say, sure, sure. This might, your Just, bad rolling might be the thing that saves you. We both lost sanity. You say that. Sure, yeah, stay sure. here. Stay here. I'm going to go and have a great adventure now with Maureen. And good night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I dash back to uh, Maureen's gaff, presumably long after she's left. I, I'd like, if it's all right, I'd like to have a look around. Is, um, is Dr. Cavendish here, my sort of assistant? No. Fuck, so every time I ask if someone's here, they're not here. <laughs> Dr. Cavendish was your former... Um, Dr. J. Yes, and he now is uh, in charge of the... Of the Bentham Hospital. Really? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, I misunderstood that on my sheet. I thought he was here in the camp with me and it provides oh, some assistance. No, okay. Sadly not. He's he's in town running running the Bentham Hospital, um, unfortunately. But a good connection. Since everyone else has got loads of NPCs at uh, uh, their back, is Roscoe McQueen here? Because if he is, I'm going to fucking kill him with my bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> Rosco, Roscoe Malloy. Malloy. McQueen, Malloy, I don't even fucking know his name Steve anymore. McQueen, I'm just going to kill him. Steve, is Steve McQueen here? I had to kill you him always got his name wrong. It used to drive him mad. <laughs> and now look at what he's done to me. I'll yeah. kill that man. What has he done? Him. I'll kill him. Oh, I want more of this. What's is this a genuine? Are you saying that out loud? <laughs> I, I think maybe, maybe I do say that out loud. That's just, as the the ringing welt and the rejection from the doctor. I think maybe I say if Roscoe McQueen McCoy. McCoy Jeez. Malloy. Malloy. <laughs> Flame Russell Gilman. Malloy was here. Literally, I haven't even finished my beer. This is unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> Roscoe Malloy was a big beer, but not that big. Uh, Roscoe Malloy was here. I'd kill him. I'd kill him with my bare hands. And then I realised I've said it out loud, and I look, I look around awkwardly, and I'll tell you what, I, st- I stomp off to my patch by the road. Mm. That's what I do. Um, what do I know? Uh, could I maybe do... Um... I should, this is something I should just know. What, what do we do with bodies here? Mm. I think you probably just go and bury them. We just go and bury them. Oh, okay. And it's icy ground. This isn't something I can do in five minutes before going and joining them. But I'm really concerned about this body. Mm. So I, I just don't feel I can like pack up and go on a wild goose chase down the road without dealing with what I've just mm. seen and done in the medical clinic. I know that might. I know that's a bit of a plot killer, but um, no, not at all. I, th- I think maybe I, I find uh, I, I find a, a, a strapping man and ask him to uh, put together a, a little a little um, grave digging team and start digging a hole. Twelve days later, <laughs> you go over to the group of people sat around the campfire. These wraith like people, they're they're completely. Uh, indeterminate from one another some of them they're so ill and they they look at you with these sort of bulging eyes and these sunken cheeks and you say i changed my mind (laughs) put together a great team and they look from one to each other wondering which of them they're burying Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, start licking their lips yeah (laughs) Sure, Doc. We'll put together a grave digging team. Yeah, the people, the people tell you they bury them, Doc. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, out in the woods, all oh, there is is a spit roast. <laughs> that's the other scenario that's going on in the background. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the cannibal scenario in the woods <laughs> that rise wild. Um, while this is happening, I, th- I think coming out of my house with Esther's coat and anything else tucked into her pockets that she left there any of her possessions that were left there, um, and my 38, and my big coat, which is tattered but still elegant. Um, I, I, I see Thomas stomping off to a spot by the road, and I sort of I sort of say, uh, yes, good, I'll, I'll meet you over by the road. And then I, uh, I go down to where the doctor is, sort of uh, con- conversing with the people, and I say, uh, who here, who here has seen the faceless men? Who of you, who among you? Anyone who's seen them? They all look at each other and then... Esther was taken last night. Someone's taken her. And I think Billy as well. And perhaps some others. Anyone who's seen them. A couple of them actually get up and, and shuffle back to their shacks. Do I know either of their names, the ones who are shuffling back? Oh, yeah, you probably know everyone. It's yeah. it's it's Angus Mc- McGuggan. <laughs> McGuggan. And, uh, and... And Johnny uh, Talisker. 
uh, and uh, oh, who would the other one be? Well, let me think. Johnny Walker, surely. And um, Sid Brown. Matt Glenfiddich. Oh, it'd be good if one of them is an investigator for, that we've had before who's just ended up here. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> From the 20s, so it's like 19, 10 years 1932. on. 1932. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's is it, is it Zachary? Is it Zachary? No. Oh, no. it could well be Zachary. No, he's insane. He's insane by thirty two. It's uh, what is it? Yeah, Mike's. It's Mike's janitor from from Miss Catholic University. <laughs> oh God! I don't. I don't hold with her. I don't hold PJ, with her. PJ, 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 PJ Mahoney. Mahoney. He's incredibly old now, paper thin. And he just gets up. Bits of flakes of skin coming off oh, him as he no, moves. Peter. He just shakes his head and he goes, No, 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 no. I'm not getting involved with no faceless men. I, I've seen enough faceless men in my dreams. Uh, uh, oh yeah, no, no. I, 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 I got a, I got my, my kids to think about. Uh, I got, uh, I got Billy Bob and, 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 and Janie Missy Sue. Sue. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy Bob. Say, so, yeah. Well, Mahoney, t- PJ, PJ, help me. You you must help me. Esther's missing. Billy's missing. I know you've seen faceless. My I teeth you, are missing. I heard you muttering in your sleep about a Duckworth, someone without a face. It's not the man. Uh. <laughs> uh, but uh, both of you, Angus, stop. Have you seen them? Did you see them last night? Oh, wait, did PJ die in that house? I can't remember. Well, that's well. not PJ Mahoney. That's DJ Mahoney. <laughs> ah, brother, I'm so sorry, MC Mahoney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Welcome to Hooverville. Um, Hooverville. <laughs> um, he, he just shuffles away from you, dejected. Right. Too scared. People okay. are scared when you say this. You realise that more of them have seen it than they like to admit. Okay. Well, anyone here not a coward? Anyone here a man? Follow me to the road. There's children missing and we have to find them. And I, I just march off. But I do throw a glance directly at the doctor when I say that. Because although maybe he's not the most sociable person, I'm not sure. But uh, I, I know he's at least of sound mind in a certain regard, as not he's still delivering medicine. I, I think I just have to be uh, honest because it's going to yeah. seem like I'm not, not rushing to her aid. And I just say... Um, uh, I say, Maureen, a, ma- a man died this morning, and I have to, I have to d- deal with that. I have to give him the respect he deserves in in death, even though he he didn't get in 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 life. Let me deal with that, and then I'll I'll help you. Tell me where you're going. I'll I'll join you. But this has to be done first. Things have to be done. I understand. We're following the footsteps. Me and Thomas will follow the, follow the footsteps. We'll see if we can raise any attention in town. You deal with the dead, Doctor. I'm off to take care of the living. And I uh, follow after Thomas. Because I assume Thomas is spot by the road. The footsteps were leading to the road anyway, right? Yeah. And it occurs to you, as you've had this conversation with the uh, community, that probably you and, and Thomas and Dr. Coombs are the fittest people here. Everyone else seems much more sick. Absolutely pang. Did you... <laughs> uh, did Dr. Coombs say all that stuff about, about someone dying loud, loudly or just, just to Maureen? My intention was to say it, um, yeah, just just enough to stop Maureen Fine. asking me, but like not, not to let anyone else hear. Although, had you not asked for a grave... I, th- I think... Uh, or was that? I think, well, I think um, I, it's probably fair to say that as soon as I approached them and saw how frail they were, I realised that was a futile endeavour. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You didn't actually ask in the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> OK. Um, well, if it's safe to say that you're going back to your medical shack... I am. You step inside and the sheet that you put down with the tools on it the tools are in exactly the same position they were in a sort of cross, but the sheet is almost completely flat. Yeah. Hmm. Almost. Almost completely flat. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's caked up dust on the floor around the pallet. Oh, fuck. Like it's just, you know, 
Is, it, no. is there something we wriggling do. in the middle of the sheet? Yeah, I would like to have a look to see if there's uh, just uh, like superstitiously, um, uh, I would like to have a look, lift the sheet to see whether there's anything where the stomach was. I'll tell you what, we need some moisturizer like nobody's business. We are all <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Yeah. Some moisture. You're already flaking. You're flaking. <laughs> I'm flaking. Was Esther not... flaky? Is everyone in the camp flaky from my memory? Everyone's flaking. Right. Even the kids. Even the kids. I just have bad dandruff. Yeah, a flaky isn't mentioned on my sheet, but it does say I'm the I am literally the most uh flaky. The least ill I, of everyone here. I'm weak and fatigued. I've just got flaking skin, but yeah. Yes, there are some things left on the as you lift up the thing. Most of it is powder and this kind of slurry. It's like a pacemaker. <laughs> Hearing aid. And yeah. A couple of gold teeth. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Im- implanted, f- implanted Fitbit or something? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And a butt plug. Um, but, <laughs> uh, no, there are... <laughs> well, it's nice to, nice to hear in some ways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least you died happy. <laughs> We're hoping for happiness. <laughs> we hope so. There's, there's like a, an out, an outline of this man in dust Ooh. and this slurry. But then there's also in the middle, sort of around the abdomen, where the abdomen was, there are these small leathery pouches, they look like. About as the size of your thumbnail. Very small. Okay. Uh, okay. There's five or six of them. Um, could I do a, a, a science, a biology roll on these to see whether they look to me like anything in particular? Like, as a player, I'm like, do these look like um, uh, co- cocoons? Yeah, yeah. That's a fail on my biology. It's 50%. I'm going to push it. Oh, ho, ho. fantastic. I'm going to push it. 50 is a good push. Yeah. By. Co- there's a few of them, are there? Collect. There's a few of these pouches. Yeah, there's like five, five or six. Well, I'm going to collect them all up, and I'm going to um, put one in my pocket, and I'm going to um, uh, give one a little sniff, and take one and and see if I can put it under. I don't have a magnifying glass, but I think maybe I've got another pair of spectacles that have got some magnification. You've actually got, you've actually got, you've got a microscope. It's oh, an wow. old microscope. Well, that's pretty exactly, battered. That's exactly what I use. I take. To, I mean, that's the most important. I'm giving you all sorts of fuel to fuck me up by telling you what else I'm doing with them. But the main thing is I'm taking it over <laughs> to the magnifying glass. That's a real shame. Uh, oh, I failed that by five. Oh, man. Yeah. And obviously, I can't spend luck because it's pushed. Bollocks! And you've got no luck. <laughs> we were doing so well, guys. Apart from the split party that we love. Yeah, I'm hoping to unsplit. Split, no, I know, I know you were. I know you were. Small area, I suppose. Ah, you are. I know you are. So you, um, you have a look at one of these under the microscope, and you see something. It looks like it looks like something wriggling around inside it in this sort okay. of fluid, and you realise it is some kind of egg sac or something like that. And then you, you, you decide to count them again. And you take them out. You put them out. One, two, three, four, five. Was there a sixth? Oh, you put it in your pocket. And as you take it out your pocket, it bursts in your... You see it burst in your hand. And the thing inside sort of... It looks sort of like leech-like. Grey and leech-like. It just disappears into your palm. <laughs> Literally the worst push roll we could have done. <laughs> Cthulhu's the winner. But it doesn't Fuck. seem to... Um, Chop it off. It doesn't seem to tear the skin or anything. It just goes... It passes through it. <sighs> well, every other character I've ever played has cut his hand off at some stage. <laughs> Never this early. <laughs> Literally, we're an hour in. God. No, no. I think um, this is... This is, this is Absolutely classic, filmic uh, yeah. situation. I now know I'm fucked, but no one else knows I'm fucked. And I just have to try and. The, my the, the only thing I care about is that the the well being of the people in the camp. So I'm not going to tell anyone that this happened. Do I need to do oh. a sanity roll for that though? Oh yeah, fuck my mind. Yes, you do. 
I think I need to do a sanity roll for that. I failed my sanity uh, roll. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe I do chop my hand off. It's pure They're mostly Mex- Mexican jumping beans, aren't they? You know, the moth <laughs> laugher in the, like, yeah. the weird little beans. That, oh, God. The original... Oh, that's. Uh, I mean, it is unpleasant, so it makes sense. You lose three points of sanity. Oh, fuck. That was quite a sexy blue steel look you just gave there, Dom. That was. Yeah. That was. Uh, <laughs> the sucking of the cheeks. That probably warrants an, an, an involuntary action, doesn't it? <laughs> so I do. I take my scalpel and it, it, immediately, where I, where I saw it go, I start digging around in the palm of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> but like qu- quite carefully I'm a, I'm a doctor like I try to avoid the tendons yeah. but I'm just trying to get like see if I can find the, the, the meat where it went and t- I'm, pu- I'm pulling the mm. meat of my palm out from in between oh. my tendons and bones I very Hope- carefully Ooh. frantically stab myself oh. yeah, hoping yeah. that I've pulled this out <laughs> and then I take some um, medical alcohol and slosh it in the wound <laughs> <sighs> and scream. And I imagine we all hear the screams. <laughs> I, b- I bite down on a leather. I le- bite down on a leather belt. <laughs> and then I, 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 I bandage it. Bandage it up. Does he find anything? Carefully. Do you find? Well, anything? do you find any? Do you pull anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no. no I, I, Not that you can see it. Anyway. They're too small. I, do, I'm, I'm, right. I, 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 I didn't do it in the hope that I'd be able to see it. I hope did it in no. the hope that I might be able to scoop something out. Kill it. Pour the pull alcohol in. Kill it. Anything. Bandage my hand up, oh, fuck. and uh, uh, just uh, give you a sort of mini pricey of what happens, so that you can move on to the next. I take my dustpan and brush. I sweep up all the dust of the dead body, and all the dust that's on the floor, and I find a container that will work as like a rudimentary urn, and pour it in and seal it tight. And put it in the corner of the room. And put something heavy on top of it, and then um, zip up the tent and um, depart in pursuit of these two. There was an old man left foot of the hill. He ain't moved away. He's a-living there still singing by. Diddle-la-diddle-la-fi. Diddle-la-diddle-la-day. He hitched up his hogs and went out to plow. Get the kid. Top the coin, hold the old. Is now a good time for a break. Let's just run out in your cow. It's a good time for a break for me. It's a good time for a break for me. I picked the kid in Harvard Yard. I parked the car 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 in Harvard Yard. <laughs> a pack of the car in the yard. <laughs> Madness. <laughs>